Welcome to Genius Stone Dialogues, conversations about unleashing wisdom, wealth, and well-being worldwide with yours truly, Alan Hutner, and sitting across from me, my my partner and uh, now good friend, Paul David Walker. He is the founder and CEO of Genius Stone Partners. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Alan. And welcome to the Genius Stone team. I, I really am enjoying having you on the team. These kinds of dialogues are going to uncover realities that perhaps no one was aware of prior to the dialogue. Yeah. And what I like about you is <laughs> your ability to draw out the best in me. And you're probably one of the best interviewers that I have ever witnessed or been interviewed by. Oh. You bring this combination from your financial background in business to to deep philosophical understanding that that you picked up studying with some of the greatest thinkers of our, of our day. So it, I look forward to this. Well, as thanks. Always. This this is not a uh, mutual admiration society of uh, insignificance. Uh, <laughs> these things are are valid, as is. Uh, the importance of Paul's book, Unleashing Genius, Leading Yourself, Teams, and Corporations, uh, as well as his poetry, which at some point in time, we might even fit into Genius Stone Partners and Genius Stone Dialogues, but that's another story. I like that's your it. poetry, too. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we are on uh, GSD number four, or Genius Stone Dialogue number four, and it's part two of something that we, we picked up on and, and, and talked about the last time we were together, and that was uh, our world and business in existential crisis. Uh, we gave background on that. If you missed it, it's on YouTube and on the website. But uh, just to reiterate, existential for our purpose means a crisis in the shaping of a person's or organization's mode of existence and moral stance with respect to the rest of the world. That's right out of the Wikipedia dictionary. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you, how did we get to this crisis? from a business standpoint? Well, I help my clients look for CEOs quite often, and it's a long and tedious affair. It's hard to find good CEOs. It's, it's just getting harder and harder to find good leaders. And the question is why? Well, I think there's four or five things that have contributed to this. One, we have been spoiled by waves of demand and by having very little global competition. We've maximized profits through IT and process reengineering. We have extended demand when demand started to fall off and profits by financial leverage, hence our crisis. And as Joshua Cooper Ramos said in his book, complexity has reached a level that's almost beyond our comprehension. Yeah, we talked a little bit about this in the prior conversation, but this idea of maximizing profits, and you said profits are good, and we're not against profits, okay? We are not against profits. But but there's a problem with financial leveraging. You just mentioned yeah. that word, and uh, maybe you just need to speak a little more about what we're talking mm -hmm. about. It's kind of the corporate equivalent of, you know, running all your credit cards to the max. <laughs> if you, you know, it feels good for a while. You can do all kinds of things that you, you thought you could never do. You, you, you leverage up, you use credit, uh, you improve your business, mm -hmm. but at some point in time, you've got to pay the money back mm -hmm. and your ratios get out of whack and you end up, corporate America has ended up taking all the best people from Harvard and MIT and all these great schools and putting them into Wall Street and financial manipulation mm -hmm. instead of teaching them to lead, teaching them to operate, <laughs> teaching them to run a business. So our brightest and best are not going into engineering. They're not going into science. They're not going into leadership. They've been going into Wall Street, financial manipulation, because they make more money. But they do not contribute to the business environment mm -hmm. at all. So when you say financial leveraging mm -hmm. and financial ma manipulation in this case, mm -hmm. it has a lot to do with debt and the creation of profits from instruments that don't really produce goods and services that help us in any way. That's right. Okay. That's right. It's, and great profits have been created, but it's not real profit. Mm -hmm. It's credit. It's, you know, it's schemes. One of my clients who's no longer in business was leveraged a hundred to one, a hundred to one. That'd be like if your salary was a dollar a year, you borrowed a hundred. Mm -hmm. 
or 99, yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, it, it's reflected also in, you know, people out there who may be listening and they're business people, but uh, everybody's over leveraged almost. We have a debt crisis. Right. Not that borrowing at times isn't needed or part of mm. a good business strategy, but we need to change this this financial manipulation arena and produce good products and services and find good CEOs that are not pressured to do the other thing, but to run a business, run a business. That's what business. That's how American business became great by mastering the art of running a business. And now, we got off track by mastering the art of manipulating finance. Yes. Yes. You, you, you mentioned something to me about, uh, infusing value systems that are that are not based on science or reality same same yeah. tr train of thought here so maybe continue uh, with some discussion of that that's what has happened yeah yeah i think what we we're facing is command and control leadership models from the past that don't tap into wisdom and when you have complexity you have to have wisdom you have to tap into the genius of your people we also are polarized in politics, in business, you're either right or you're wrong. And that is simply rubbish, mm -hmm. right? This value system is destroying us. And then we have the, my favorite word is the magic wish syndrome. <laughs> These things that are based on hope, you know. And lastly, we have a disdain for self-awareness in the business world, yeah, sadly. I, I like the last two. I want to take mm. those on. Okay. Uh, uh, speak more about the magic wish syndrome. <laughs> what are we talking about here? One of my favorite phrases, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> and where does that come from? You know, we have a very optimistic society. You know, we have Disneyland. You know, when you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a little more complicated than that, you know? We're the greatest country in the world. We do all the right things. If we do the right things, things will work out. Okay? Well, you have to do the right things. But it's not just hope. It's not just wishing. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, what creates magic is the unleashing of genius mm -hmm. and the work of finding your genius and turning that genius into reality. That's magic. It's not... Hoping. That's the real magic. That's the real magic. And and, and the other thing you said uh, about uh, uh, corporate America having a uh, uh, a disdain for a disdain for self awareness. Yeah. Is that really true? <laughs> Is that true? Are you? Are yeah. you? Are you? Well, you know, you look at companies uh, during the crisis, the financial crisis. They're short on money. What do they cut first? Yeah, they cut their personal development programs. They cut OD. They cut uh, areas that caused people to grow up, right? And yet, it's known that a company can only grow as fast as the people leading the company and the people in the company. And yet, we this growth stuff is rubbish. You know, we got to focus on business. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you focus on business, you know, if you're not growing? How do you compete in a competitive marketplace if your leaders are not growing? Yeah. You don't. So self-awareness, mm. very important, leading to genius, yes, extremely important, extremely the important. bottom line here. All, all that fits into the understanding that we talked about before with that Einstein quote, that you have to up-level your awareness and your understanding so that the thinking changes, the problems that you had are solved at a different level. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what our teams are doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Our, our genius stone our genius partner. stone team partners, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what, that's yeah, what we're doing. And that's, is it easy? No. Does it have to be done? Yes. Which is one of the reasons I love working with you. And, had you, you know, after reading the book, Unleashing Genius, you kind of brought me into conversations that picked up my past of, of a number of years ago being in the business world and realizing, look, that's where the money and the power is, and that's where the changes, the positive changes right. can be made. Well, just one thing. There is no separation mm -hmm. between genius and the real world. Genius, that state of awareness in the present, is the real world. Everything else is just a description. All right, join us for the next edition of Genius Stone Dialogues. That on collaborative networks of leaders being essential for success. Yeah.